Let's see Jonathan versus me. One, two, three. <laughs> I didn't beat him by a ton. All right, we got a Jonathan. On my uh, Ducati. Not sure why his... Uh... <laughs> This thing's weird getting on it after uh, not having ridden one. So this one's pretty much identical to the 2020 that I had. This is a 23. Didn't really change anything on it. Let's make a well, make a right at the next light. Next light, make a right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's quick. And I never get to see it going down the road without me on it. So it's nice to, you know. That you sit up on it. This one you sit down in it. This is more relaxed. Sorry for shouting in everybody's ears there, blowing eardrums out. Hopefully you weren't wearing headphones. We'll find a straightaway where we can play a little bit. This has got the way louder exhaust. Oh, come on. Damn it. Thought we'd have a little bit of clear track. definitely lighter. Yeah, the city position is so different on this. You look at them and you're like, they're going to be pretty similar. And they're just not. Like, your, your feet are fairly high up and back on this. Your feet are in an aggressive attack position, but the front end is not. The handlebars are closer to you, and they just feel a little bit higher. But I think that's because your butt's lower. The That one, you're definitely higher in the back, lower in the front. That is more of a sport bike position. It's not uncomfortable for all day riding, but it's not as comfortable as this. Big freaking rocks and gravel. You gotta give it to this one for the noise. Look what mode this is in. It really is in sport. I think you can't put it in track unless you're stopped. That's sport's probably fine. Oh, now he's gone. <laughs> I'm sitting here dicking around with the electronics.
Lamborghini Urus. That is an amazing SUV. <laughs> I think it's like 660 horsepower. I'm not going crazy fast because this road does get uh, patrolled a good bit. tickets. So riding this thing back to back with that, now that we're done dicking around for a little bit, well, I say that, but I'm sure we will find an opportunity. Um, I like it. And even though that thing's probably 40 pounds heavier than this, like it's a significantly heavier bike. And you can feel it when you flick it back and forth, but the way that it turns in, I don't know, the front on this, and this is set up for me because I had this bike and I wrote down all the suspension settings, how many turns on all the stuff. And so these, me and him are about the same weight. I set this up for him exactly the way mine was. And when you ride this thing, it feels very sharp and agile. But coming off of that, that the suspension is a little bit more firm. I will say this is a little more compliant going over the bumps. So it's smooth, a little smoother. But that one feels just a little more planted. It's definitely got more grunt. The brakes and everything else are gonna be similar. The gearbox is nicer on this one, I'll give them that. This quick shifter's smoother. But the way that it handles, because you're definitely more upright, This one seems like it revs forever, and it doesn't have as much urgency. It's got the power, so overall, and it's got shorter gearing, so it's, but it revs higher. I mean, it all kind of averages out. This thing's very sporty. It's lighter, it's four grand cheaper. The, Components are on par, Brembo's. This one does have Olin's versus Saks on the shock. So the shock, but this isn't like your race grade Olin's. This is your OEM grade Olin's. It's not the same, but it is nice. It's a seating position. You're When that thing, you're more over the front end. I feel like you have more feedback. You could feel more of what's going on. Does daddy like? It's just a little more aggressive. It's just a little more. And, yeah, and, it, and it's not really much faster than this, but it feels faster. It's weird. does pull nice man these triples have got plenty of torque but you got a 765 cc three cylinder versus a 955 twin but that is a very over square twin that is not like the old 996s 998s or even 1098 recommend to him that he goes I on my mine fell quicker but I just remembered that I did go I think I went up a tooth on the rear sprocket on mine so I lowered my gearing a tiny bit and 
without changing the chain that forces you to move the rear wheel forward a little bit, shortens the wheelbase, which does help make it feel just a little more flicky. Not that this bike feels slow to turn in, but the geometry on that thing. Now the new ones I think are supposed to be different. I think the newest model of the Street Beat, uh, Street Triple RS is more up on its nose and um, the ergonomics are a little bit more sporty. Um, I mean, I'm sitting bolt upright. I'm not leaned on, granted I do have long arms, but I'm not leaned over at all. I'm sitting up like I would be on my um, on the Speed Twin or the Z900 RS. Whereas that bike is in between that, but not as aggressive as like a Jixxer or something. I do like this. I hadn't ridden one in a while. I was kind of jonesing to jump on it and see if it was as good as I remember. And it basically is. But it has just a that different, that more upright feeling, the softer suspension. The cluster's so much bigger and it's further out in front of you. Whereas you just have that little tiny dash with no screen, nothing on the, uh, and it's small. And the headlights and everything are down further lower, down low. So on the Street Fighter, although they're blindingly bright looking back in the mirror, um, again, this gives you more of the impression that you're sitting in it. And that bike, you're more, you're more perched up on top of it. Nothing wrong with either. It's going to be a matter of personal preference. This thing is a little ripper. I think going up a tooth on his uh, rear sprocket will definitely make it just a little bit spicier. It, it's geared a little tall, and it doesn't need to be. This bike is geared to go like 160 something. It doesn't have the horsepower to do it, and they have it governed. Um, it'll it'll stop pulling around 145, 144, 146, somewhere in there. So my preference on this is to gear it out to where you're just about to kiss the rev limiter when it's going to shut down and stop pulling anyway. And that way you have maximum acceleration from here till that point. But it doesn't stop pulling at 10.5 when you can rev it to 12, right, in top gear. So get back that. Because when you're up at that speed and your RPMs are lower, you're not at, you may not be at your peak horsepower. So I'd rather, if you're going to have the same top speed anyway because it's limited, why not gear it down so that you're not slowing the bike down. Either way, it's limited. One's going to be gearing, one's going to be the electronics. But if you can um, get to that speed quicker, as long as it's not so highly geared or low geared that it's going to be you know, stupid RPMs and buzzy on the interstate. Man, this gearbox is so much better than the Ducatis. I definitely love this bike. I, I like my Ducati a little bit better. Now, if we were comparing this to the 24 or the 25, which was the, a significant refresh, more power, different ergonomics, um, IMU-based uh, electronics instead of the standard, you know, older generation. There's a good bit of uh, improvements on the new ones, and that might be a bit more track aggressive, kind of like the Ducati. So maybe there, you know, would it be more even footing? This I feel is probably. Well, I know it is. It's the best all-around, naked, street, occasional track bike you can buy. MT-09 SPs are great. And there are advantages, more dealerships, cheaper parts, all that kind of stuff. But these things are bulletproof. I mean, they've been making these motors for the Moto2 series for, what, five years? Five and a half? I mean, if there are problems with the, seven, or the 675 motor, we'd know about it. They have sold a shit ton of these bikes. And the Moto2 engines aren't blowing up left and right. And because they're beating the shit out of them in Moto2, they take what they learn and strengthen up and improve, you know, the street bikes. So I would say that these motors are pretty much bomb-proof. You put a full pipe and an exhaust and stuff, you got 125. That's what I got out of mine. 
I know some guys got closer to 130 on theirs uh, with a full exhaust. I just did a decat and a slip on. But I mean, to have a bike that weighs less than an R6, it's comfortable for all day riding. You get all the electronics. The only thing this doesn't have is cruise control, but maybe the new one does. But you got auto blip. You can get the Bluetooth box and have your uh, integration with GPS and see the incoming call on the dash. Like, that'd be pretty freaking cool. I will say I love the sound of this exhaust. And I've been thinking about exhaust for my Ducati because I feel like, you know, it should sound like a Ducati. But as I'm rolling along and this thing is just like droning, I kind of don't like it. Now, granted, he's got the Chinese uh, copy of a SC Project, which is one of my least favorite exhausts because they're basically a glorified exhaust tip. There's no muffling going on. They're just brutal fucking loud and obnoxious. And to me, I'm like, eh. And when you're trying to vlog and hear what's going on, well, the Ducati, you know. I think I may just leave that damn thing stuck. What's switch? <laughs> oh yeah, the seating position. I mean, I'm immediately in an attack position going back and forth. My clutch, I like his clutch better. He's got a cable actuated clutch. This has got the, uh... hold on a second, folks. Are you gonna put the exhaust on it? I was just literally talking about that while I'm vlogging. I want to, cause I want it to sound like a proper Ducati, but I'm listening to that and I'm like, it's annoying. Especially when you're trying to vlog, it's just in your ear the whole time. It's distracting. So I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, I almost appreciate being able to listen to music and talk on this. I'm torn. <laughs> I'd probably do exhaust on this if it wasn't, you know, stupid amounts of money. I would say, oh, going back to back like that is freaking so telling. All right. My seat's firmer. My suspension's harder, more firm. Um... I, his cable actuated clutch, better. I honestly don't like hydraulic clutches. You never get the feel. Hold on again. I just, I don't know. No, no, it's not the speakers. It's just, it's obnoxious. <laughs> I, I like it. It's a good sound, but it's a bit much. And especially when you're trying to vlog, it's very distracting to try to talk. And because you, you find yourself yelling into the microphone. So anyway, what I was saying about the, uh, I feel like, all right, so getting on this, seat's firmer, suspension's firmer. Your feet are just as high and up, but you're, you're pitched forward definitely because the seat's higher, a little bit narrower, and you definitely put more pressure on your wrists. Like you're, you get on this and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to attack the turn. You can attack that on that bike. Obviously it's a canyon carver, but it it's it's completely different bye johnny it's it's a very very different even though they're in this they're competitors they're in the same you know category as you know middleweight naked sport bikes naked super sports whatever you want to call them um the torque on this so much more there's a much more direct feel I mean, on his, it's got torque, but it's very smooth and linear here. You just, you grab it and it just, it just goes. And this isn't really up in its power band, but still, you just twitch it and it just, I just like lurch you. <laughs> it's just, his does not do that. And that's just the nature of a big twin. So let's go through the list. If you're trying to compare those two bikes, now, it's all fresh in my mind, riding them back to back. Having owned that bike for a year and a half, I've done ridden on street, did track days on it. Had this for a little while, and lots of other Ducatis. I would say that, I'm gonna stand by my earlier, when we did the first part of the video where we did a little drag race and talked about the differences in the bikes. 
The Triumph is the better buy. Similar, you know, higher spec components. Um, that one does have the, the addition of having Olin's. I don't think it's that much better than this shock, but if that's of matters to you, certainly the Olin's is easier to get replacement springs and they're easy to work on. You can swap the spring on an Olin shock yourself without a shock press. Just loosen the collar all the way. They thread the collar so long that if you loosen it all the way, it takes all the tension off the shock. You have to take the shock off the bike, but then the spring is not under pressure. So you just take the shock apart on the workbench without having to clamp it in a vise or do anything. That's cool. But other than that, the damping on this is actually really good. The Showa big piston forks are the same. Now, I don't know if the damping rates, you know, Ducati might have tweaked the shim stacks and stuff like that, but they are the same off the shelf Showa big piston forks as on that bike. So they should feel pretty similar. But this, they are a little bit firmer on this bike as is the shock. Um, I feel like this because it is a little heavier and it does have a little bit of a longer wheelbase. It feels like it turns in slower, or you think it would be, but it doesn't. I mean, this thing is just as razor sharp as that street triple is, is known to be. But it just feels very planted and very stable leaned over. The street triple will do whatever you want it to do. Uh, there's times it feels a little twitchy. It's because it's just so light. It, it does wiggle around a little bit. Not uncontrollably. Once you're used to it, it's fine. But, um... It's, uh, as soon as I got on this, I went to sit in and it's like, oh no, wait, I'm, poof. yeah, it's like, okay, I feel like I'm ready to, you know, take off. The throttle response is more immediate. So what his has going for it is four grand cheaper. Maybe not a lot to some people. I consider four grand a pretty good chunk of Cheta. And it offers similar performance, even if it delivers it and it, you know, differently and it feels different. His has the better clutch. It's more comfortable and relaxed. Suspension's a little softer, which is good on the street if you're gonna commute and eat up miles and stuff. And um, as an all-around street bike, that'll see an occasional track day and you just want to commute, you want to go whip it up in the mountains, honestly, go get that. Go get the Triumph. If you just want to have um, a bike that's more track bike focused, it's like, his is a really amazing street bike that can do track days just fine. This is a bike that's more geared, a little bit more geared towards your track day that also does well on the street. So there's a lot of overlap. His has a more of a street bias. This is gonna have a little bit more of a track day bias while not being a Panigale, you know what I mean? And being like all hardcore and mediocre street bike. They're both a really good balance, but one definitely leans a little more in one direction than the other. I will say my gear shifter and my my gearbox is smoothing out as I get the miles on it. And that is nice. But his was that butter smooth coming out of the box, driving it off the lot. The Triumph just has a really nice, refined, very smooth, buttery snick. This is a bit stiff and notchy at first, but it's mellowing and smoothing out over time, which is nice to see. I wasn't that happy with it when I first got it. But I've got 3,000, 3,500 miles on it, and it's, it's smoothing out a good bit. It's noticeably different than it was. Um, I'm rambling here. But if we go back, his has value, similar performance, a little better on the street as a, a day-to-day -day street bike. It doesn't cook your goddamn thighs the way this thing does. And the heat coming off of this is brutal. I just I just put up with it. It's gonna be awesome in the winter time. 
in the Georgia summer, it it's distracting. Um, so he's got value, more comfort, lighter. And has a really good engine sound. And, and when you want to tune it and put an exhaust, you can go get a $500 slip on and tune it yourself. You know, so f for me, that that's because so you got four grand cheaper on the bike, but then for $500 for exhaust in the tune versus at least 2000 another big difference. Now you got a 5500 pound, a $5,500 difference. Uh, or no, yeah. Yeah, because you had exhaust to this versus exhaust to that. That's a big stack of cash. That's a used track bike just sitting right there. You know, it's a spare bike. Um, where this one's better, much sexier to look at. I think if it had an exhaust, it would have a better sound. It definitely makes more power. It's a bit quicker. It's a little more planted and stable because of the slightly longer wheelbase and the stuff like that. It has a better electronics package. And it's definitely more aggressive. If you're a short rider, you got shorter arms, you might find your tiptoe and to sit on this one. And you might find that it's not as comfortable being leaned forward. For me, it's fine. Got a Yami, what do we got? I think he's got a 10 though. If I could beat an MT-10, he's got a passenger. I might even it up. I couldn't tell. What's up, Bandit? Suzuki Bandit? But yeah, that's nice. I love going back to back on bikes like that. Because you think in your head, you're like, well, on paper, it's just a, you know. It's a slightly different flavor, a slightly different shade of vanilla or different, you know what I mean, a variation. On paper, they're, eh, they're in the same sort of power weight class. They're both the same kind of bike, targeting the same kind of market. But you get on them and you realize just how different they really are. Which one do I prefer? Uh, it really is a tough call comes down to there's things about this mechanically that I absolutely do like better and I like the look better I think it's got that extra Italian panache even though panache is probably not an Italian word um, but when you look at how much more it costs is it four thousand dollars cooler is it four thousand dollars faster not really. If I was going to buy right now, today, if I didn't have a bike, and I was going to either go pay cash or go put some money down and finance a new bike, today, it would absolutely be one of these or the new version of that. It's got more power, better electronics, a bit more aggressive. Honestly, there's nothing Yamaha's got right now that I want. Cowie, nothing. Honda's got nothing. Honda hasn't had anything I've wanted in years. Uh, I mean, there's MV Agusta and stuff, but I'm not going to spend that kind of money and have no dealers around anywhere. You know, there is the new... Triumph Speed Triple RS. Which is, uh, got some really cool stuff that everyone's bitching about. It doesn't have the dual analog dials, and it's like, yeah, that's true, but. Let's see what we got. Is that the nine? 
Is that Finn? What's up, man? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing some vlogging, talking about my, my bike for curses that versus my buddy Jonathan's Triumph. And then you pull up, and I'm like, I wonder if that's Finn. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I end up knowing the guy. So, uh, actually, I should have taken that right hand turn, but I wanted the bike to pull up alongside me to see what it was. <laughs> uh, Alright, that's an MT09. I can definitely beat that. Unless Nick's driving it. This dude's a hobbit. else to vlog about honestly I just wanted to ride, do a little drive you know pulls on the highway compared now that we had when I raced against uh, Nick my horsepower advantage wasn't enough to overcome the massive weight difference but uh, with Jonathan and me being within 15 pounds or so of each other I held a slight edge so his bike's definitely quick if I'm going to give you buyer's advice between the two, and I think if you're looking at a naked street, like you want a naked sport bike, you're going to be like, I'm going to commute, I'm going to go blast around in the mountains, I live in an area where there's twisties, I might do a track day, maybe two a year. I think there's really only four bikes you should consider if you want a naked bike, if you don't mind not having a fairing. And honestly, unless you're doing high speed runs, you do not need a fairing. People like the look, but I don't know, being hunched over in that position, it's great on a racetrack or when you're going stupid fast, but you can't go, you can't drive around 150, 160 miles an hour everywhere. You're going to end up dead or in jail. You know, you're going to have a blip here and there. So I find the naked bikes, yeah, you still go to jail and dead speeds here, but it does hold you back a little bit. You're not going to go much over 140-ish on a naked bike. And not even on a track day. That's all you... I mean, you could have so much fun in this. I know so many people like, I want the R6, I want that. And then you look at them ride it, and some guy in a DRZ400 spanks them up in the mountain. <laughs> you know? Cowie's got the Z900, and I believe... I'm not crazy about Cameron's because... Although he rides the shit out of it, but... For what you pay, it's like it has lower end suspension and it's not adjustable and stuff. But they have one now that has adjustable forks and I think it has an Olin shock. They have an, uh, an S, a Z900 SE model that comes with upgrades. I think that's a fantastic choice. The MT09 SP, phenomenal bike. Really pokey motor, really nice package, very well balanced. It's a triple, but it's it's a bigger motor than the uh, than the street triple. And then you got the street triple RS, and then you got this. I think this one is really if you just if you have extra money to burn and you just want a Ducati, it'll be the most track focused of that bunch. And again, I'm not saying this is a track bike like a Panigale or an R1, but of those bikes, it will be the most track focused, while still being pretty pretty damn livable on the street. Um, and so if you've got the money to burn and you just, you know, you want a freaking Ducati. All right, pay the Ducati tax and enjoy. But between those other bikes, they're all around the same price. The Z900 SE versus the MT09 SP versus the Street Triple RS. Between those three, no comparison. Go with the Triumph. It's a proven race winning motor. Those guys in Moto2 are beating the snot out of it. They take what they learn, trickles down into the street motor. They keep refining it and making it better. 
There is no better naked sport bike and occasional track bike right now that you can buy for the money other than that Triumph. Those are going to be my recommendations. If you want the more aggressive, snappy, more taut, uh, and aggressive, and you don't want to, you don't mind spending the money, get this. You want to get a bike that's almost as good, but a lot cheaper. And it's still not a Japanese, you know, cookie cutter bike. Go with the Triumph. That's all I got to say. I probably could have said all that in about four minutes, but I don't know. I'm just riding and goofing around so we'll see y'all later